Welcome to Brightly Storytime. I'm Miss Linda. At ReadBrightly.com, you can sign up to get reading tips, book recommendations, and videos like these delivered to your email inbox. Today, we're going to read a story about that feeling you get when you're trying something new or meeting someone for the very first time. It's called The Day You Begin by Jacqueline Woodson, illustrated by Rafael Lopez. There will be times when you walk into a room and no one there is quite like you. Maybe it will be your skin, your clothes, or the curl of your hair. There will be times when no one understands the way words curl from your mouth, the beautiful language of the country you left behind. My name is Rigoberto. We just moved here from Venezuela. And because they don't understand, the classroom will fill with laughter till the teacher quiets everyone. Rigoberto, from Venezuela, your teacher says so soft and beautifully that your name and homeland sound like flowers blooming the first bright notes of a song. There will be times when the words don't come. Your own voice, once huge, now smaller, when the teacher asks, what did you do last summer? Tell the class your story. We went to France, Chela says. These shells came from a beach in Maine. A boy named Jonathan holds out a jar filled with tiny shells so fragile they look like they'll turn to dust in your own untraveled hands. My whole family went to India, Spain, South Carolina. Each souvenir a small triumph of a journey, their travels going on and on. And as you stand in front of that room, you can only remember how the heat waved as it lifted off the curb and your days spent at home caring for your little sister who made you laugh out loud and hugged you hard at nap time. You can only remember the books you kept on reading long after she had fallen to sleep. And in that room where no one else is quite like you, you'll look down at your own empty hands and wonder, what good is this when other students were flying and sailing and going somewhere. There will be times when the lunch your mother packed for you is too strange or too unfamiliar for others to love as you do. When even your own friend Nadja will wrinkle her nose and say, what's in there anyway? And you'll wonder how she doesn't see the rice beneath the meat and kimchi. You'll wonder why she doesn't remember that rice is the most popular food in the world. There will be times when the climbing bars are too high. The run is too fast and far. The game isn't one you can ever really play. I don't want him on our team. You can watch. Maybe you can have a turn later. There will be times when the world feels like a place that you're standing all the way outside of. And all that stands beside you is your own brave self. Steady as steel and ready, even though you don't yet know what you're ready for. There will be times when you walk into a room and no one there is quite like you until the day you begin to share your stories. My name is Angelina and I spent my whole summer with my little sister, you tell the class, your voice stronger than it was a minute ago, reading books and telling stories and even though we were right on our block, it was like we got to go everywhere. 
Your name is like my sister's, Rigoberto says. Her name is Angelina, too. And all at once, in the room where no one else is quite like you, the world opens itself up a little wider to make some space for you. This is the day you begin to find the places inside your laughter and your lunches, your books, your travel, and your stories. Where every new friend has something a little like you and something else so fabulously not quite like you at all. Have you ever felt like the boys and girls in this story? It can be a little scary to go somewhere that nobody knows you yet. It takes courage. But if you're brave enough to reach out and share your story, I think you'll find the others will meet you halfway. Welcome to Brightly Storytime. I'm Miss Linda. At readbrightly.com, you can sign up to get reading tips, book recommendations, and videos like these delivered to your email inbox. Today, we're going to read a story about kindness, inclusivity, and diversity. It's called All Are Welcome by Alexandra Penfold and Suzanne Kaufman. Pencils sharpened in their case. Bells are ringing, let's make haste. School's beginning, dreams to chase. All are welcome here. No matter how you start your day, what you wear, when you play, or if you come from far away, all are welcome here. In our classroom safe and sound, fears are lost and hope is found. Raise your hand, we'll go around. All are welcome here. Gather now, let's all take part. We'll play music, we'll make art. We'll share stories from the heart. All are welcome here. Time for lunch, what a spread. A dozen different kinds of bread. Pass it around till everyone's fed. All are welcome here. Open doors, rush outside. We will swing, we will slide. We'll have fun side by side. All are welcome here. We're part of a community. Our strength is our diversity. A shelter from adversity. All are welcome here. We will learn from each other. Special talents we'll uncover. There's a big world to discover. All are welcome here. So much to learn, so much to do. And when the busy day is through, can't wait to come back, start anew. All are welcome here. Head for home to get some rest and greet tomorrow ready and fresh. Our time together is the best. All are welcome here. You have a place here. You have a space here. You are welcome here. What can you do to make someone different than you feel welcome? Maybe you can play a game together, or share some food, or ask them about their special talents. Who knows? If you are kind and welcoming, they might be your new best friend. Welcome to Brightly Storytime. I'm Miss Linda. 
At readbrightly.com, you can sign up to get reading tips, book recommendations, and videos like these delivered to your email inbox. Today, we're going to read a story about Llama Llama learning an important skill. It's called Llama Llama Loves to Read by Anna Dudney and Reed Duncan, illustrated by J.T. Morrow. Llama Llama learns at school, counting, writing, reading, rules. Friends and school, there's nothing better. Llama learning all the letters. Letters make a special set. That set is called the alphabet. Llama knows the first, one, two, three. He can say them, A, B, C. And then there's D, and next an E, and on it goes to X, Y, Z. No two letters are the same, but every letter has a name. It can be said, it can be heard. Letters together make a word. Llama Llama learning words. Some he's seen and some he's heard. Some he has to memorize with his brain and with his eyes. Llama Llama knows that one. He can read it. This is fun. Llama Llama writes his name. And once again, just the same. First L, then L, then A, M, A. What do all these letters say? Something to make a present of. L-O-V-E, that spells love. Words make rhythm. Words make rhyme. Words make books for story time. Words tell truth. Words tell new things. Words make songs that we can sing. Words are the very best of presents. Words together make a sentence. Llama's hooves wave in the air. Some words are hard. It's just not fair. No need to frown. No need to pout. Just do your best and sound it out. No need for crying, moaning, bleeding. Llama Llama, hooray for reading. Teacher holds the walking sign. Now it's time to make a line. How does Llama Llama know? G and O spell go, go, go. Lots of sentences. Take a look. Strung together make a book. Look inside. Oh, what glory. All those words have made a story. Llama reads so many things. Fairy princess, pirate kings, shiny knights and dragon fights. Under seas and up great heights. Back to class and off they go, filled with all the words they know. Skipping, hopping, walk in line. Llama Llama sees a sign. And on that sign, what does he see? One S, one T, one O, one P. Llama knows that word says stop. 
No more skipping. No more hops. Llama reads the word out loud. Llama Llama, feeling proud. School is over. The day is done. Llama had a lot of fun. Who can't wait to read to Mama? You're a reader, Llama Llama. Words have magic power indeed. What else could a person need? Llama Llama loves to read. What does your teacher do to help you learn to read? Can you spot words you know on signs or books? Next time you're out with a grown-up, play a game to see what words you know. Welcome to Brightly Storytime. I'm Miss Linda. Today, we're going to read a book about the first day of school. It's called Milk Goes to School by Terry Border. It was the morning of her first day of school and Milk was feeling just the tiniest bit scared. Don't worry, her dad said. You're la creme de la creme. That means the best of the best. And he gave her a brand new backpack for good luck. At school, Milk walked over to the first kid she saw. I really like your backpack, Cupcake said. Thank you, Milk answered. My dad gave it to me. He said, I'm la creme de la creme. Waffle leaned over to Cupcake and whispered, I think this milk is spoiled. Milk sniffed herself. She didn't think she was spoiled. Please find a seat, everyone, said Miss Pear. Sit by me, Milk said to Cupcake. You're pretty like I am. Yup, she's spoiled. Waffle said to himself, but Milk ignored him. She didn't think she was spoiled at all. Miss Pear asked everyone to draw a picture of their family. Milk asked Carrot, would you like to share crayons? I don't care at all, Carrot said. Like I said to Salad, let us be friends. Carrot seemed okay. Everyone did a good job, but Milk was really proud of her drawing. Don't you think it looks beautiful? She asked Carrot. Waffle looked at Carrot and said, spoiled. But Milk shook her head. She didn't think she was spoiled. She was just trying to be friendly. Then Miss Pear asked the kids what they wanted to do when they grew up. Cupcake wanted to be an artist. Peanut wanted to be the first astronaut on Mars. Potato wanted to be a sailor on a gravy boat. Milk said that maybe she could be a queen because she liked being the boss. Waffle said, she's so spoiled. You don't seem too sweet yourself, said Milk. Next, the class worked on their spelling. Milk couldn't wait to show the other kids what a good speller she was. So when Milk's paper got splattered, she yelled and stomped her feet. You messed it up, Soup, she said. Waffle turned to Soup and said, she's spoiled. But Milk didn't think she was spoiled. She just like having her paper look pretty is all. Later, in the library, Milk asked if someone cut the cheese. I don't like that saying, said Cheese, but I think someone tooted. Oops, sorry, said Beans. Milk started to leave. I'll curdle if I stay. Spoiled, Waffle Mouth to Beans. You don't seem too sweet yourself said Milk. 
You're an awful waffle. On the way back to class, Milk followed Waffle and Cupcake in line. Waffle, you are slower than syrup, said Milk. That's not true, said Waffle. Syrup is way back there behind us. Cupcake turned and waved at him. Milk was not happy. She was just trying to be friendly. Back in the classroom, they watched a movie that showed baby chicken nuggets hatching. They were so cute. But Egg got worried because he didn't want something to hatch from him. Milk said, don't worry, I think you might be a rotten egg. Look who's talking, answered Egg, and then both of them got in trouble for arguing. They're both spoiled, Waffle said to Cupcake. Milk decided she did not like Waffle. At recess, Milk watched as Apple asked Waffle how they could get some more kids to play tag. Ice cream, yelled Waffle. Really? Apple said. Why would you do that? Ice cream, yelled Waffle. I know, I heard you, said Apple, and it's scaring me. Waffle said, I'm just trying to get ice cream's attention over there. Ice cream, hey, ice cream, would you like to play? Milk wished someone would invite her to play, but she knew what Waffle would say if she asked, and Milk didn't think she was spoiled at all. At the end of recess, Celery lost a raisin, and everyone helped look for it. After a while, Milk admitted she had already thrown it away when she found it sticking to her shoe. She did offer to get him a new one, but Waffle rolled his eyes. Milk wasn't sure if she liked school at all, or if any of the kids liked her. On the way back to class, Milk was too sad to watch where she was going. She didn't notice Banana's peel. She slipped and spilled herself all over the floor. Oh no! Quick, someone bring in some kittens, laughed Egg. I bet we could make some good cottage cheese out of that spoiled milk, laughed Waffle. If we jump up and down, I think we can make that milk shake, laughed Beans. Cupcake was worried and began to cry. Milk might be a little spoiled, but she did ask me to sit by her this morning. And when we drew pictures, she did share her best crayons, said Carrot. Plus, she said she would go to the lunchroom to get me a new raisin, said Celery. And milk does help grow strong teeth and bones, said Barbecue Chicken. Let's not cry over spilled milk, said Miss Pear. We'll mop her up and get her back in her carton in no time. During all of this, while she was just a big puddle, milk heard her classmates. She was surprised any of them cared about her, especially because Maybe she had been acting a little bit, just the tiniest bit, spoiled. But the excitement wasn't over for the day. As soon as Milk was back in her carton and all the kids were back in the classroom, Cupcake got a whiff of Pepper, who was standing nearby, and ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, choo! Cupcake sneezed off her frosting and sprinkles, all over Milk and everyone else in the class. Whoops, said Cupcake. Everyone waited for Milk to get steamed, but she didn't yell or stamp her feet. It's okay, Cupcake. It was an accident, said Milk. Now we all look like la creme de la creme. The whole class laughed, 
even Waffle. I was wrong about you, Waffle said to Milk. You're not too spoiled. That's nice of you to say, said Milk. You actually seem pretty sweet yourself. Do you think Milk was acting spoiled? Or were her classmates judging her too quickly? I'm glad that in the end, everyone could get along. Welcome to Brightly Storytime. I'm Miss Linda, and today we're reading Here Comes Teacher Cat by Deborah Underwood. Pictures by Claudio Rueda. Psst! Cat! I know you're napping, but this is an emergency. Miss Melba had to go to the doctor. She needs you to teach kitty school today. Dog is on vacation. And I suspect Santa Claus, the Easter Bunny, and the Tooth Fairy aren't available either. Yes, there will be kittens there. That's kind of the idea of kitty school. Where are you going? Come on, kittens can be fun. Oh, cat, Miss Melba has always helped you out. Remember how she made you that nice catnip pillow? And brought you soup when you were sick? Way to go, cat. It's only for a few hours. Goodness, you look surprisingly happy to be here. Wait a minute. Cat? Cat, where are you? Nice try, cat. It's not nap time yet. Okay, cat, what are you going to do first? Music? That's a great idea. Hey, where are you going? Um... Cat? Cat? That might be too loud for the... Class next door. Maybe something else? Building time? That sounds fun. Cat, what on earth is all of that? You're building a... What? A fountain that spouts fish? I think the kitty wants to help you. Wow, it works. I guess that takes care of snack time, too. Art is next? Great! Aw, Cat, the kitty has a paint set for you. Cat? Uh, what are you doing? Cat, do you think that's a good idea? Oh dear. Cat, you're making an enormous mess. Oh no, I think I hear Miss Melba. What are you going to do? Good thinking, kitty. Hurry. Welcome back, Miss Melba. Oh dear, Cat. I guess you'd better tell her. Wait! Where are the kitties going? 
Yes, they played music and built things and had some fish and painted. Hey, and they learned to talk with signs, just like you, Cat. And it looks like you might have learned something about kitties. Cat, is it time to say goodbye? Cat? Aw, looks like it's finally nap time. Sweet dreams, Cat. What a fun day in the classroom with Teacher Cat. I hope you have as much fun learning as those kittens did. Hi, welcome to Brightly Storytime. I'm Miss Linda, and today we're going to read How to Get Your Teacher Ready by Jean Reagan, illustrated by Lee Wildish. You're ready for the first day of school. But what about your teacher? Make her feel welcome with an extra big smile. Then, how to welcome your teacher. Sing a good morning song. Show her your favorite spots in the room. If she asks, why don't I have a cubby? Point to all the drawers in her very own desk. Whisper, I know where the bathroom is if you ever need to go. School days are busy, so make sure she's ready for art. Button up her smock before a disaster. Lunch. Share your secret. You get extra spaghetti if you say please. Library time. Show her where to find the iguana books. When it's time to go home, tell your teacher Good job today. Ready for tomorrow? As the year gets going, there are lots of special things to get ready for, like picture day. Remind your teacher no messy snacks. Chocolate cupcakes? Nope. Powder donuts? Nope. Juicy, juicy pomegranates? Nope. Take a look at her hair. Does she need a comb? Then, instead of saying cheese, say teacher. Perfect. Now it's time for messy snacks. or a holiday concert. If your teacher's feeling nervous, show her how to tiptoe, tiptoe, tiptoe to the side of the curtain. Pull it back a teeny bit. Once she spots her family, she'll be ready to la la la. Or, the 100th day of school. Everyone get ready to jump up and down 100 times. Plant 100 bulbs. Count 100 toes. And if you still have time, tell 100 jokes. Some days, even when your teacher is ready, things don't work out as planned. The class pet escapes. All the planets crash down as the principal pops in. 
or rain ruins everything. How can you help? Quick, hand her a favorite book. When the day finally ends, say, don't worry. Tomorrow we'll all be ready for a brand new day. Your teacher knows a lot, but not everything. So ask, are you ready to be amazed? Then teach her all about big stinky flowers of the jungle. What elephants, naked mole rats, hummingbirds, and Venus flytraps like to eat. The sounds of a howler monkey. How sometimes magic happens very slowly. When spring comes, it's time for field day. How to get your teacher ready for field day. Make sure her whistle works. Help pick out her fastest shoes. Double knot the laces. Does she have her water? Her hat? Her sunscreen? Now everyone shout. Ready, set, go! On Teacher Appreciation Day, you don't want your teacher to be ready. You want her to be surprised. How to celebrate your teacher. Everyone dress in her favorite color. Say teacher in all the languages your class knows. Give her something special, but definitely not a big stinky jungle flower. An ice sculpture for her desk. An already opened box of chocolates. As the year ends, get your teacher ready for one last thing, goodbye. How to say goodbye to your teacher. Decorate a thank you card with all the things you learned. Surround her for a whole class hug. Give her one last extra big smile. Now your teacher's ready for a new class. You're ready too for a whole new year. But your teacher will remember you forever. And you'll remember her. Do you have a favorite teacher? Be sure to thank him or her for all their hard work this year. Come back again to read more stories together anytime you like, or find more books to read yourself at readbrightly.com. Bye. Oh, hi everyone. Thank you for tuning in. I'm really excited to read our book to you. It's written by myself and my sister, Zalika Holder Young. Ion woke up bright and early. He usually loved going to school, but today he felt a little bit worried. Ion, where's your happy face? His mom asked. I'm not feeling so happy today. Sometimes at school, I don't feel very smart. I feel worried I won't know the answers. Ion's mom looked into his eyes. Do you remember what we always say? He nodded. Let's say it together. I am smart. Let's say it louder now. I am smart. <laughs>
they both shouted toward the sky. Ion felt better, but deep down, he was not so sure. Outside, Ion took his mom's hand. Look who it is, she said. It was Mr. Grandpa. He waved and gave Ion his usual morning greeting. Go get him, Ion. Today is going to be a great day. Thanks, Mr. Grandpa, Ion replied quietly. But deep down, he wasn't so sure. Ion, Coco wants to say good morning. Ion scratched the little dog's ear like he did every morning. Coco wagged her tail. Ion high-fived his friend, Amarly. She lived just around the corner. See you at recess, Ion, yelled his friend. Ion was still quiet. His mom squeezed his hand. Isn't it nice you have so many wonderful people in your life? People who care about you. What do we always say? Let's say it together. I am blessed. Let's say it louder. I am blessed, they both shouted. Ion's mom picked him up and swung him around. Ion couldn't help but giggle. After they crossed the street, Ion stopped to tie his shoe. He had been practicing, but still he asked his mom for help. His mom replied, I think today is the day. Give it a try. Ion concentrated on his shoe. It took him a few minutes, but he tied his laces into a perfect bow. See, Ion, you can do anything. Let's say it together. Ion smiled. I can do anything. He looked at his mom. Louder, he asked. She nodded. I can do anything, they both said together. Ion let go of his mom's hand and she bent down to give him a big hug. Ion was definitely starting to feel better. Today was already becoming a good day. He thought about what his mom had said. He repeated those words to himself slowly as he walked up the steps. I am smart. I am blessed. I can do anything. As he stood at the door to his school, Ion said it again. This time, out loud. I am smart. I am blessed. I can do anything. The end. I hope you all enjoyed it. <laughs> Hello, boys and girls. My name is DJ Steinberg, and I am the author of a book called Kindergarten, Here I Come, by me and illustrated by a fabulous artist named Mark Chambers. And before we read this together, because that's what we're going to do today, I was hoping that I could have your help, because I understand that the kids who go on brightly are pretty smart. So can you just help me? I have my backpack ready for kindergarten, and I'm just trying to make sure that I'm putting all the right things in it to get ready for the year, like my, my crayons, check, my, uh, my glue, is that right, check. I'll, I have some pencils and an eraser, check. Very good. Okay, how about um, some hand sanitizer? Check. Got to keep our hands clean, right? How about a, a cubby box? That's that's very good, I think. Um, how about my uh, my rubber ducky? I, I don't need my rubber ducky. Okay, okay, rubber ducky, you're gonna stay here. But I, I'll I'll need my robot. Not my robot. Okay, robot will stay here. Um, oh, for sure though, I'm gonna need my pet chicken though, right? No, not my pet chicken. Okay, I'm sorry. You're gonna stay at home. Okay, you be a good little chicken while I go off to kindergarten. Oh, I know, I know something that I'm definitely going to need. My puppy dog. Will I need my puppy dog? Yeah, I think so. What do you say? Are you gonna come to kindergarten with me? Come, we're gonna put you inside my backpack. Wait a minute. My puppy dog's not gonna fit in my backpack. And maybe puppy dogs aren't supposed to come to kindergarten. I'll tell you what, you wait at home for me and I'll give you a treat when I come home from kindergarten. Okay, so now, why don't we read this book all about the year of kindergarten, getting ready for it, all the fun things we do while we're in kindergarten, and when we're all done and we graduate from kindergarten. Okay, are you ready for some fun in kindergarten? Kindergarten, here I come. 
Kindergarten, here I come. I'm checking off the list of everything I need for school. Let's see, what have I missed? Backpack, check. Glue stick, check. A labeled cubby box. Extra pair of underwear, extra pair of socks. Crayons, check. Scissors, check. Mom says I'm all set. But wait, there are tons of other stuff I'd better not forget. My cuddle bear, my magic wand, my superhero cape, two flashlights and a tool set in case I must escape. Huh? Mom says to put those things back where I took them from. She says that I won't need that stuff. She promised school won't be too rough. I hope she's right. I really do. Cause kindergarten, here I come. My teacher. My teacher did a magic trick the minute that I came. I don't know how, but presto poof, she somehow knew my name. Then bam, she figured out I'm nice and that I'm really smart. And just like that, she seemed to know how good I am at art. I think she used some magic spells to make the whole day fun. Of all the teachers in the world, I'm glad that she's my one. Crisscross applesauce. Crisscross applesauce, that's the way we sit. Not feet out sauerkraut, not cottage cheese on your knees, not bottoms up coffee cup, not blueberry jelly on your belly, but crisscross applesauce, that's the way we sit. Once upon a story time. Goblins, bunnies, kings and queens, cats and hats and magic beans, once upon a far away, which book will we read today? Yellow Lunchbox. I love you, Yellow Lunchbox. Click, I open you to see. What treasures lie inside today? What did mom pack for me? Aha, so there you are. Below those good things I should eat. I found you, Chocolate Cupcake. You're my favorite part, the treat. Missing tooth. I was munching on my apple when suddenly crunch. My tongue felt something missing and I had a little hunch. Out came a tiny pebble, all shiny, smooth and white. Hey, look, the tooth fairy's coming to my house tonight. Recess. I'm a fireman to the rescue. Down the pole I slide. Look now, I'm a monkey, swinging side to side. I'm a climber up the mountain. I'm queen of this whole town. Check me out, I'm a bat hanging upside down. Watch me creep across this beam. I'm a sneaky thief raccoon. I'm the pilot of a rocket ship zooming to the moon. In only half an hour, we are all these things and more till recess time is over and we head back in the door. Counting craze. There are 22 children here in room 109. A guinea pig, three goldfish, and one cuddle bear, mine. There's one really nice teacher with eight buttons on her dress and one billion purple polka dots, more or less. There are 39 crayons that fell out of the box, 53 cars, and 87 blocks, 24 food cans in our make-believe shop. Oh, help, I've learned how to count. Now I just can't stop. No nap rap. I'm not tired, I'm not sleepy, I'm wide awake, you see. It's daytime, it's my playtime, you say nap time, not for me. I'll lie flat upon the mat, but I'm not counting sheep. You can snooze, but I refuse. Oh no, I will not go to. Field trip. Hooray, hooray, a field trip day. Adventures in the air. Driver, driver, please don't stop until you get us there. We squeal and hoot, we screech and roar, and stomp the whole way through, just like a bunch of animals, until we reach the zoo. Best friends. Heather was my best friend this morning on the bus, but she talked so much to Shauna that I made my best friend Gus. But Gus said he was Noah's friend and wouldn't take it back. 
so I had to go and trade him for a better best friend, Zack. Zack wouldn't share the box of blocks, so what else could I do? At lunchtime, I sat right down beside my newest best friend, Sue. Then Sue ate half my cupcake. I didn't say she could. In art, I was all by myself. I was done with friends for good. Then someone came and asked me, can we paint together? So, on the bus ride home again, my new, new best friend was Heather. George, I have a kindergarten friend who isn't very big. I'm talking about George Washington, our classroom guinea pig. I always stop to talk to him about the stuff we like. I tell him what's on TV and how to ride a bike. I'm teaching him his ABCs and how to draw a heart. He always pays attention. That George is clearly very smart. 100th day of school. I brought 100 marbles inside my plastic cup. Zach brought 100 chocolate chips till someone ate them up. Nina's 100 toothpicks all came inside one box. Aaliyah brought a picture of her 100 chicken pox. I used to think 100 was a lot when I was small, but now that it's the 100th day, I am old enough to say 100 isn't all that many, many days at all. Show and tell. Today's my turn for show and tell, but somehow I forgot. I could have brought in Cuddle Bear, or else my new robot. I could have brought my snow globe or my cool vacation hat. I could have brought my goldfish, except I didn't think of that. So now my hands are empty and my teacher's calling me. But hang on, I see something staring right in front of me. Quick, I draw two dots on my finger while I stand. Then I make my thumb into a mouth. Hi class, please meet my hand. Line leaders. Lineup time! It's a race! Everybody wants first place! But I go slowly. I don't run, cause I'm the line leader. I was picked the line leader! So make way, kids, for number one. Growing seeds. We planted seeds in paper cups and put them on the sill. We watered them and watched and watched and watched those cups until... I peek today and check it out, a little baby seedling sprout. Growing me. What happened to my favorite pants? The ones that used to fit. Now they come up to my knees when I try to sit. My toes can't wiggle in my shoes the way they used to do. I think somebody shrunk my clothes. Or could it be I grew? Last day. I hugged my teacher. Please don't cry. And she said, beg your pardon? I said, we're going to first grade, but you're stuck in kindergarten. The end. And so, boys and girls, that is my book, Kindergarten, Here I Come. And it's part of a series of books. There's Preschool, Here I Come, and First Grade, Here I Come, and Second Grade, Here I Come, and then a lot of other Here I Comes that are now uh, coming out. Um, so I hope that you enjoyed this little story about my fun year in kindergarten or your fun year in kindergarten, whether you're starting the year or in the middle of the year or finishing it and graduating now, congratulations. And I hope you have a fabulous kindergarten and I hope that we get to do story time again sometime. So again, this is DJ Steinberg signing off. Hi everyone. Today's Flip Along is The Wonderful School, written by May Justice and illustrated by Hilde Hoffman. There once was a very unusual school that had for its teacher, Miss Tilly O'Toole. She taught all her lessons in riddles and rhyme, and those who learned quickest were given a dime. Red light stop, red light no, green light hop, green light go. Little boys grin, little girls giggle, 
Little dogs just go wig-wag wiggle. Be sure you don't forget to feed your dog or cat. You can ask for food. Animals can't do that. Miss Tilly quite often her pupils would praise, even those who were clever in curious ways. Like Dennis McGinnis, who danced on his toes, and Sandy O'Brien, who wiggled her nose. When Tommy had trouble in learning to read, Miss Tilly O'Toole showed him how to succeed. She took him to read all the signs in a store, and Tommy read proudly a dozen or more. The kite that Tom Jefferson bought at the store got broken and wouldn't go up anymore. But Miss Tilly fixed it with sticks and a string so that it went up like a bird on the wing. Miss Tilly O'Toole could do most anything. One, only one can't have the fun. That's always shared by two. And three or four have even more, a rule that's tried and true. When you hear a little song coming from a thicket, guess if it's a yellow bird, guess if it's a cricket. But when you hear a boom boom coming from a bog, you don't need to guess at all. It's bound to be a frog. Ducks have the right to go their ways through puddles if they choose. But boys and girls on rainy days should wear their overshoes. Whenever a dark or dreary day came, Miss Tilly O'Toole often made up a game. And while they were playing, her pupils forgot the weather outside, whether cloudy or not. I am sure there was never a happier school than the one that was taught by Miss Tilly O'Toole.